how to protect yourself from a two-factor hack. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. This is one of those things that I think a lot of people are concerned about, but perhaps a little bit unnecessarily so. Two-factor is important, and we're going to talk about why. But I also want to go through each of the scenarios that allow you to protect yourself from your second factor being stolen or lost. So in increasing security order, the least secure is no two-factor at all. In other words, you don't have two-factor. The only thing you need to sign into a specific account is your username and your password. If those are ever exposed, either through malware, through accident, through a breach somewhere, then hackers have access to your account. It's that simple. A username and a password is all they need if you don't have two-factor turned on. So, good. SMS text messages. Now, there's been a lot of controversy here about SMS text messages, and we'll talk about how it can be compromised in a moment. But I want to point out any two-factor is better than no two-factor. So if all you have available to you is SMS text messaging, turn it on, use it. So what can go wrong? How can SMS two-factor be breached? Well, there are a couple of different approaches. One is what's called SIM swapping. That's where a hacker basically convinces your phone company to reassign your phone number to their phone. Then they get the text messages and assuming they have your password, they can then sign in as you by providing that second factor. Physical theft is the other one. Losing your phone is one of those ways that people are concerned about because they've lost their second factor. Another is phishing. Phishing is one of the scarier ones, I guess, because in one fell swoop, you can be tricked into providing your username, your password, and the current SMS code that was just sent to you if you enter it all into a fake site that you think is real. And finally, and this is the one that, that I don't know, it annoys me, but it's, I mean, it's true, it can happen, is what's called a telephone company breach. This has never happened in the United States. Uh, at some point somewhere in, I think, Europe, but I could be wrong, um, a phone company was compromised. And by compromising the phone company, the hackers could then redirect text messages to wherever they wanted. Honestly, this is not something I ever worry about. So how do you protect yourself from these threats? Well, to avoid SIM swapping, Check with your mobile provider and see if they have additional security to help prevent your account or your number from being randomly reassigned without your authorization. Usually there's an additional pin code involved, but the bottom line here is that many mobile providers have this ability to require a little bit more than a sob story to get your phone number assigned to a new phone. Keep your phone physically secure as well as digitally secure. Always know what to look for when it comes to phishing. And like I said, I know of no way to, work, to, to protect yourself from your telephone company being breached, but it's also not something that I worry about at all. And something I'm going to repeat after each of these scenarios, because it's so easy to overlook, is that the two-factor code is useless if the hacker does not have your password. That's why it's called two factors. You need both to sign in. So simply losing your second factor isn't enough. As thief, having your second factor isn't enough. As long as they don't have your password or as long as they don't have your second factor, they can't sign in. That's the whole point. Better authentication apps. Apps like the Google Authenticator or Authy or any of a number of other tools that basically when you set up, you create a relationship between the service and that Authenticator app such that it displays a new number every 30 seconds that 
only the service would know is correct. Or put another way, your phone is the only device that can then provide the correct number. So what are the ways that authenticator apps could be compromised? Well, phishing, that's number one on the list, actually. Again, if you are enticed into going to a login screen for a service that looks like your service, but is not your service, it's designed to fool you into thinking it's your service, you may be entering your username and your password and the current value of your authenticator app. Now, this requires, of course, that the hacker be there in real time. I mean, they have to be somewhere on the planet, of course, but they have to be looking in real time so that they're capturing your username and your password. And for the duration of that authenticator number being valid, they then quickly enter it into your account. Then they get access to your account and can start changing things. Physical theft, if someone steals your smartphone, then by definition, they have your two-factor authentication app if they can unlock your phone. And of course, authenticator account theft. I've honestly never heard of this happening, but in theory, it's possible and I want to include it. Many of these services allow you to set up an account. So for example, with Authy, it knows who I am by my phone number and a password. What that allows me to do is have multiple devices that all have the same codes simply by signing into my Authy account. However, if that becomes compromised, if you give away the password or if somebody's able to sign into your Authy account, then they would get all of your two-factor codes. So how do you protect yourself? Well, once again, know what to look for to avoid phishing. That's a common thread, not just here, but in a lot of security rules. Keep your phone physically and digitally secure. Same thing as before. And finally, properly secure your authenticator account if you are using one. And typically that means having a good strong password and usually a pin code to unlock the app itself. And again, this is gonna get repetitious. The two-factor code, is useless if they don't have your password. I keep repeating this because many people panic the moment they lose their second factor without realizing that they've not lost their password and they're not at risk. Much better, a hardware key. These are keys like the YubiKey from Yubico. This then sets up a relationship between your account online and the physical key. What that means is when your account asks you to insert the key and press a button, then only your key will know the correct answer to whatever the online service is requesting. That basically proves you are in possession of your second factor, that hardware key. Now, what are the risks? Well, besides misplacing it, physical theft. In other words, if somebody steals your second factor, well, same as before, of course, you want to keep that hardware key secure. And again, you're not going to lose, lose access to your account unless the thief has both your hardware key and your password. The best is your hardware key plus you. So in the realm of two-factor authentication, there's actually the possibility of what I would call three-factor authentication. Normally, your password is what you know. Your phone containing, say, your authentication device or your key is something you have. The third factor is something you are, which basically means biometrics. Usually it's a fingerprint or a face recognition. There are hardware keys that both act as the simple hardware key we just talked about, but only if your fingerprint is the fingerprint that's actually pushing the button. That requires three things to be correct in order to be able to sign in. Your username and password, what you know, your hardware key, what you have, and then your finger, what you are. That is 
basically the highest level of security that you can come up with right now, pragmatically, for two-factor, or in this case, three-factor authentication. Now, I do have to throw out, I'll call it honorable mention. Normally, when we think of three-factor authentication, it's password, key, and fingerprint in our case. However, normally when we then think of two-factor authentication, it's password and key. What if it were password and fingerprint? Totally valid. That actually is a very valid form of two-factor authentication, something you know and something you are. Now, it's not as commonplace. And honestly, I'm not really sure why that is. It certainly is an option on uh, you know, a lot of laptops and other things that have fingerprint recognizers. I know that for your phone, there's a fingerprint um, option on many of the models but it's not used as extensively as two-factor authentication. In fact, it's rarely a replacement for two-factor authentication. I think that is because my, th my theory is that the hardware that's used in laptops and on phones isn't necessarily as robust as that which is basically put into a purpose-built two-factor or three-factor authentication key the risk of false positives may simply be too high. And that's something with a two-factor key or a three-factor key you really want to make sure is locked down tight. But the bottom line here is, yep, it's a possibility. It's honorable mention, but um, it is somewhere in the realm of being about as secure as uh, a Google Authenticator equivalent of uh, two-factor authentication. So bottom line, bottom, bottom line, use two-factor authentication. Honestly, I'm not even going to say which one you should use. Use whichever one works for you because that is more important than the difference in relative security between one over the other. What's most important is that you use one of them. That gives you the massive jump in security that two-factor gives you. After that, it's refinement, it's convenience, it's whatever works for you. Obviously, if you are a high value target, well, you need to be talking to security professionals. But if you're just an average user trying to protect your most important accounts, like your email account, these are the options, use one of them. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com slash 168757. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.